Rowan, um, I don't know if I dare ask what your initial thoughts were about the Cam Smith charge, but I'll try. What, what did you think initially? I didn't notice it on the on the evening, but yeah, you know, I appreciate the process with the match review panel has to go through all sort of contact uh, incidents during the game and and see if uh, they're all fair game. So we we decided we thought there was a there's a case to be uh, heard for as far as downgrading goes. So we'll we'll go through that process tonight. Was it a fairly simple decision to appeal that one? Uh, we go through process, you know, every charge we get to, to consider our options and uh, have a look at previous charges and previous situations and, and get a bit of a feel for the situation. So, um, it, you know, we, we just sort of went through our regular due course to work out whether we thought there was a case for it and we thought there would be. Just, I don't know whether you're allowed to, is it like a um, criminal investigation? Are you allowed to actually comment on the, the incident? Did you think it was a worthy of a charge? As I said during the game, I didn't really um, notice it, um, and even even in review, I I didn't really, um, it wasn't sort of eye catching or um, draw my attention too much. But you know, having having looked at it, you know, the the match review panel have, um, you know, found a found a charge there, and you know, we we think um, there's a fair case to to be downgraded. What does the I don't know if you can help me with this. I was looking at the. The sort of um, the, the the minutes of it. What does higher end of sanction grade? You see it on quite a few. What does that mean? Uh, that that reflects uh, the previous record um, quite often. So if you've had a couple of other low grade charges, they can accumulate so that instead of a fine, it becomes a a, a one match uh, ban. Right. So would that be difficult to appeal insofar as that's to their to their end facts? I suppose. It was charged at a grade B, so we, you know, we we believe um, there's a case to to downgrade to an A, um, and in in that case, the the punishment becomes different. What were your thoughts on the Sangare charge and punishment? I thought it was, um, you know, obviously it was a accidental contact, um, but following the the framework that was released in the preseason. Um, you know, it it follows the framework to a, you know, to a T really. So we understand that charge. So pending the appeal tonight, where does that leave you with with forwards for for Friday? And I'm thinking of Leon Rowan, Nicholson, Watton, Tom Holroyd. Where does that leave? What's the what's the bigger picture ahead of Friday? Yeah, we've got Holroyd and, and Donaldson that didn't play last week that are available. Um, so yeah, you know, we feel like we're we're in a decent position there, and we've also chosen some games to run with an extra back on the bench to to cover uh, potential injury in game. So you know we're we're fully confident whoever we have out there on the field will will be in a good place to to uh, put in a good performance. And those two low knees that I mentioned, are they would they be able to would they are they able to be recalled at this point? Uh, Leon won't be able to, but um, you know. Tom has served his initial two-week period, uh, but we we don't have any plans to bring him back at this point. And obviously, everyone will focus on the the forwards, given the the suspensions and the the appeal. But uh, are you considering any possible changes elsewhere for Friday? No, everyone else has sort of come through the game pretty well. Um, Harry had some stitches in his lip, and he's he's recovering well. Um, so we don't have any other real concerns uh, across the the rest of our group. It was a pretty horrific cut, wasn't it, Harry's? You mentioned it in the the post game press conference. You didn't explain how quite how gory it was, and but that's not going to keep him out of Friday. No, he's, he seems to be recovering well. He got moving um, today in some field sessions, so um, yeah, he's he's um, he's taking a decent bang on the lip, but he it's you know I think the mouth particularly heals very, very quickly. And um, there's a tremendous looking stitch job that was done. It looked very clean and clean and tidy the day after the game. And now it's just a matter of um, sort of settling down and some of the swelling going out of his lip, but he's, um, you know, he understands it's a, it's a combat sport and that's the the price you pay sometimes, but he's a, he's a tough, tough young kid. And um, he's been making the right noises about playing this week. So, 
we'll um, you know we'll go up to Thursday and and make a call on that. But it's it's looking like he's 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 going to be right to play. What's your evaluation of Warrington then? Well, they're they're a strong group. They've got a you know a very very sharp um, and well working spine together. Um, some quick people on the end of the line and. Yeah, I know they're they're missing a couple in the forward pack, but they've they've got a lot of good forwards that are still still there playing. So they've obviously set the standard um, at the top of the table, along with a couple of other teams there. Uh, but they've they've been amongst the leaders so far, and you know we understand there's a lot of threat to their, you know, across the board, and you know George Williams and, and Dufty particularly. Is there any chance that um, David Fussell too will be back this week, or is it more after that? There's obviously going to be a week off, and then you back after the charge call. Yeah, he won't be playing this week. He's he's going in the right direction now. He's getting some more work done, but he quite won't be quite ready. So yeah, we'll be hoping um, come the week after the Challenge Cup that he'll he'll be flying into that week and, and ready to go. Um, with Cam Smith um, suspend, well, if he, if you fail your appeal, will you consider playing Jared O'Connor? at 13 and maybe bringing in an extra spine player on the bench? Uh, it's one option I'm considering. Yeah, Jared played uh, a lot of 13 last week and he, he has done in a couple of other games that we've uh, we've done well in this year as well. So um, he adds that versatility to us and coverage and he's got a great motor and F team team first uh, sort of mentality and ethics. So um, that's, that's one option. Um, but if he comes off the bench, you know he's likely to play in that thirteen role as well as the as the game goes. So whether it's at the start or whether it's later, um, James Bentley obviously is ruled out this week after the uh, the HIA. How is he, and is that a concern given he had a long um, a long concussion last season? Yeah, James is actually going to see the consultant um, this afternoon to to get an update and, and uh, be assessed there. So we'll know some more after today. Um, he came through pretty well after the game. No sort of immediate uh, headaches or those sort of normal symptoms, which was which was really good. Um, obviously, the best of a worst case. Um, and yeah, his health will be number one in the short term. It's over six months now, I think, since um, the, the last sort of incident. So, you know, that's one of the time frames that they look at, you know, as far as grading the return to play. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be guided by the experts after he sees them today. Yeah, so he's, you've got obviously a break after this week, so he, he could have a chance for the for the game after the, uh, after the cup break, could he? Poss possibly. I mean, I'd be surprised if he's... Um, back into his return to play and ready to go by then. But again, I'll be guided by uh, what the, the consultant says and then in, in conjunction with our medical team here. And um, how, how important is it to um, to go on a run of results now and to build on last week? Obviously, um, it's very tight at the top of the table, isn't it? it it's an opportunity playing um, Warrington to, to move up a few, uh, a few places. Um, yeah, I'm not a table watcher, but it's important to, to win and to, to play well, firstly, uh, and to get a win this weekend, to, as it is every week. It's um, it's a very tight four competition. I think there's five, six teams. He's there on uh, four and two, and a couple are five and one, and you know there's a couple that are not, not not far behind. So it's a it's a tightly congested competition, which you know I think most people expected uh, this year that it would be. So. Another chance to test ourselves against one of the, you know, the the form teams of the competition so far. So we'll be looking forward to, you know, improving on um, last week in some ways and and taking some other things from last week forward with us. The um, defensive effort last week's given you a good good platform to build on, wasn't it? Well, it, it reinforces that we can do it, um, which over the course of the season. Um, you know, I think the the fewest line breaks made uh, against us. Uh, we've had tries scored at times from close range and from some kick deflections and some barge, you know, lack of concentration at times. But overall, we've been very difficult to break down um, throughout the season. But that really doesn't count for anything. Come Friday, we've got to start again with the same sort of mentality and intent to be difficult to break down and try and get that complementary game going where our attack is is flowing and that helps our defence and then our defence 
does well and helps our attack. Thanks, Sean. All the best for it. I'll see you there Friday. Thanks, Pete.